Hi everyone, my name is Rizwan Tarek and in this video we are going to be talking about hardcore processors and softcore processors. So for some reasons there are weird results on YouTube when you want to learn about softcore and hardcore on YouTube. So, but anyways, uh, don't really worry about it. I have done my homework and I've got you covered. So without further ado, let's get started. So in very simple terms, a hardcore processor is a processor that's actually physically implemented as a structure on the silicon. So in this figure, if you have a look uh, at the ARM core, uh, this is the core which has been fabricated in the form of a chip. So we can consider this as a hardcore processor. And in the similar way, if you have a look uh, at the Raspberry Pi board, the chip that is that the Raspberry Pi is using uh, also consists of a hard core, which is an ARM core. So in short, we can say that when a processor is physically implemented on silicon, it can be called as hardcore processors. So as we discussed, hardcore processors are implemented on silicon. Speed generally varies from hundreds of megahertz to one gigahertz and more. Generally, hardcore processors, when they are implemented on silicon, they are very optimized designs. And this is one of the reasons that uh, we can get really high speed uh, from these hardcore processors. So if you take this individual component into account, mostly these cores are cheap. Um, let's say an example of Raspberry Pi, you can get a Raspberry Pi in 35 to $40. And the reason they are cheap because when they are fabricated, uh, they are fabricated in millions. So this lowers the overall cost of the chip. Uh, the drawback is that when you fabricate the chip on silicon, now the design has been fixed. So you can't really do any further modifications in the design. So any modification is not possible. Any reconfigurability is not possible. And generally, it has higher time to market and by higher time to market we mean that from the concept of the processor till the final fabrication of the chip it can take up to 10 months to one year or maybe more depends on how complex the chip is so this is why it has like a really high time to market so in the hard processor core you get higher density higher speed and low power consumption and as I said, this is why we see a lot of these cores being used in so many consumer devices which are battery operated because it consumes less power as compared to uh, soft cores. And a soft core is basically a hardware module delivered in the form of synthesizable SGL code. Uh, it can be VSGL or Verilog and it is implemented using the FPGA fabric. So in, in a soft core processor implementation, you write your code in VSDL or Verilog or some other hardware descriptive language, and then you sort of uh, synthesize your design and implement the design and generate the beta stream. And then you can basically implement it on any available FPGA in the market. In this case, if it is Xilinx, you can use Vivado and you can write your code in Vivado and generate the bit stream um, for the Xilinx FPGAs. So, so in, in very simple words, a soft processor core is a processor implemented using the FPGA fabric. Generally, the operating system of a soft core is lower. It is around 250 megahertz or maybe lower, again, depending on the a type of processor core you are trying to implement and it is generally limited by by the speed of the fabric we have seen that there are different speed grades uh, available for the FPGAs and FPGA is generally a more complicated fabric it has DSPs it has block RAMs it has LUTs it has flip flops so FPGA fabric is very general and you can basically uh, implement any synthesizable code uh, on the FPGA. So it's not really optimized just for the processor implementation and, th and this is the reason we can have uh, uh, clock speed limitations uh, in the FPGA fabric. But even though we have this low speed, there is a really good feature in FPGA that is reconfigurability. We discussed before in hard cores, once the chip is fabricated, you cannot modify your chip, you cannot modify your processor. 
But the good thing is that in FPGA, there is a lot of reconfigurability which is possible. So let's say you have the SGL code. You can do so many different things with your soft core processor. For example, you would like to have a different cache size. You can definitely modify it. You would like to have some fault tolerant features in your processor. Definitely you can add it. You can add more registers and you can increase the memory, local memories and also system memories. And let's say you would like to have some single precision and double precision calculations so you can add some floating point unit to your soft core processor. So it is quite reconfigurable. You can modify the design and you can again synthesize and generate the bitstream and it will work just fine. And the second thing is parallelization. So we see that uh, we have this limitation of uh, operating frequency when we are implementing soft core on FPGA fabric, but you can really use the parallelization feature of FPGA. You can parallelize your design to meet your system requirements. You can use multiple cores. Uh, you can run four cores, let's say at 250 megahertz, parallelize your task, and then you will be able to achieve your desired performance. But again, you cannot just uh, copy paste the course. Whenever you add another core, it will also cost some resources. We also have to keep in mind if we are adding multiple cores, it should not exceed the FPGA resources. Low time to market. For example, as I said, if you change your design, if you do any modification in your design, you can quickly reprogram the FPGA and now your FPGA will be having your new processor. Just imagine that if a drone has an FPGA built in, if you do any design modifications, you can wirelessly change the design of your drone, program that FPGA with the bitstream. And this is extremely powerful when you are working on designs which are changing quickly. And this is what we have seen uh, in during the implementation of deep neural networks, because in deep neural networks, we are continuously gathering more data, we are training our network, and we are updating the weights uh, and biases of our network. So in that case as well, FPGAs can be helpful. So in short, a soft core processor usually has lower CPU performance than a hard core processor, but has the advantages of flexibility and portability. So let's have a look at some of the commercial and open source soft cores. So there are some soft cores which are provided by Xilinx. Uh, Microblaze is one of the soft cores which you can use if you have Xilinx FPGAs. So this is very vendor specific. So you cannot really use Microblaze in other in other FPGAs. So Cadence provide these uh, Tensilica cores. They they can be implemented on FPGA, but you can also implement it on the chip as well. So they work both ways. I will do a very separate and detailed video about Tensilica cores. These are extremely nice cores and I've used them in the past. Neos 2 by Altera. And this is also a soft core which is provided by Altera FPGAs. And this is also vendor specific. Uh, you can only implement it on Altera FPGAs. But there are some open source uh, soft cores as well, which are uh, which, we, which you can use. Uh, for example, this Leon, which is based on a Spark architecture, you can definitely use this core and you can implement it on basically any, any FPGA. And in the recent years, we have seen a lot of boom in the RISC-V architecture. So if you have a look at the Pulp platform, this Pulp platform provides a large variety of cores which are based on RISC-V instruction set architecture. So I can just show you the websites uh, just in case you would like to have a look uh, on these cores. So this is the website uh, of Pulp platform and you can see that there are different cores, 32-bit, uh, 4-stage core, 64-bit, 6-stage, 32-bit, 2-stage, single core and multi-core processors. You can definitely have a look at it. Check this out. This is open source and you can implement it on uh, FPGA and if you follow the github you can you can see that it has all the support available in terms of test bench and rtl files so we have seen that there are commercial soft cores processors 
there are open source soft core processors but you can also create your own processor core in SGL and test it on FPGA this is also possible and as we are also seeing a large interest in RISC-V based ISA and in the recent years I've also seen a lot of students creating their own cores which are based on RISC-V instruction set architecture imagine you have this FPGA Ultra 96 version 2 board it has a Zinc MPSOC chip and in that chip we have ARM hard cores, uh, as I told you in the previous videos, it has quad core and dual core ARM processors. So that is hard core processors. And as I also explained, MicroBlaze soft core is also provided by Xilinx. So you can also implement that uh, in the Ultra 96 board. And along with that, you can implement any third party core. It could be Tensilica by Cadence or it can be your own SGL core. So all these three different kinds of cores can coexist in this device. So in this scenario, you can have the best of both worlds. You can have ARM hard cores, which you can run on higher clock speed, but you can also have soft cores in the form of microblade or any third party cores, which you can parallelize and which you can customize according to your own needs. So you can see that there are a lot of things possible when you have a system like Zinc MPSOC in which uh, there is a hard core and there is also FPGA logic tightly coupled to each other. So this is it from this video. I hope you enjoyed it and you learned a lot from it. Like the video and subscribe to the channel. In this way YouTube algorithm will be recommending this videos to other people who would also be interested in learning about uh, these topics. Thank you so much and we will see each other in the next video. Till then, ciao!